Hello and welcome. My name is Deborah Wynn Arbenlow and I'm a blogger and photographer for Second Life. Today I'm going to be showing you what blending modes do and how you can use them to create effects for your photos. I'm going to be using a photo with a background, but you can do this on a photo with uh, green screen layers as well. It's just easier to see what the effects do when you have a background already. So I'm going to take my background layer, which I've named um, active layer, just so that you can see, and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'll right click it and I will duplicate the layer. I'm going to call this layer blending mode. You don't have to rename your layer, but um, so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to name it blending mode. Okay so I have an active layer and a blending mode layer. The active layer is the main layer. The blending mode layer is the layer that will do effects on the active layer. So they are the same image one on top of another. Some of these effects will not change because the images are the same and I'll explain that as I go along. So these are the blending modes. There are lots of options and I will explain the sections real quick. So these two layers are what we consider normal layers. These modes here are darkening modes. These modes here are lightening modes. These ones are contrast. This section has inversion, these two, and cancellation modes, these two. And then these layers are just component layers. Um, these modes will change the effect based on uh, colors that are in the upper layer. Now I'll explain them in more detail. <laughs> okay, so in the normal layers, we're not really going to use them. Dissolve is not going to do anything to our photo because dissolve only applies when some of the pixels on your layer are transparent or semi-transparent. None of ours are, so it doesn't matter. You probably won't really ever use Dissolve in making photos prettier because it sort of results in a blocky style. Okay, so in the darkening layers, the darken mode will do nothing <laughs> because the darken mode only affects pixels that are darker in the blending mode layer than on the active layer. So if this image was not exactly the same as the layer below, it would absorb some of the darkest colors from it and apply them to the active layer. But since it's the same, it completely cancels it out. Moving on, we're going to talk about multiply. Multiply makes the dark parts of your photo darker. I've already used multiply to show you how to create nighttime effects, but when you just apply it over a photo, all it really does is make the dark colors darker. The only blending modes that you usually will use on a photo like this is multiply, screen, and soft light. Unless you're looking for an extreme effect. So multiply is a good general darkening blending mode. Moving on you've got color burn. Now color burn is similar to multiply but it also increases the saturation of your midtones. So your photo starts getting very orangey most of the time. It, it brightens all of the saturation. So we probably wouldn't be using this unless you were looking for a bit of an extreme effect. Next up we've got linear burn. Linear burn is similar to color burn except it doesn't saturate the colors as much. So you've got color burn which saturates but doesn't darken as much and then linear burn, which darkens more, but doesn't saturate quite as much as color burn. Then you've got darker color, which um, is basically like darken, so it doesn't really apply to our photo. Moving on from the darkening, we have the lightening modes. Lighten is the, these are basically the opposites of each other. So lighten will not affect our photo because the pixels are the same. Lighten will take uh, light pixels and retain them on the active layer. But since our pixels are all the same, it cancels it out. Next up is screen, which is something that we do use on photos. Screen takes uh, the dark pixels and lightens or removes them 
and turning them white. So this is really good for smoothing transitions. So if you look at the original and then you look at this, you see how it takes out a lot of dark lines. But it also brightens this a little bit too much sometimes. So you could always increase and decrease the opacity. So you can create partial effects. Screen is very commonly used in photography for Second Life. Next up we have Color Dodge, which is the opposite of Color Burn. So instead of turning things darker, it turns things lighter. So it retains these dark colors, um, it increases the saturation, and then it brightens all of the lighter colors. So it's sort of an extreme look. But sometimes people are into that. Now some of these modes are affected by the fill layer. This is the fill layer here. So opacity just decreases the entire channel. Fill layer decreases the effect instead. This may be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to not talk too much about fill layers. Okay, so color dodge increases the saturation and brightens all of the light colors. The opposite of color burn. Linear dodge is a brighter version of that, so it still saturates all the colors, but it lightens the white parts even lighter. And then we've got lighter color, which is like darker color and has no effect because the pixels cancel each other out. Moving on to the contrast modes. Overlay will uh, be a combination of screen and multiply modes. So um, darkens darker colors and lightens lighter, lighter colors. So here's the original and here's the overlay mode. Some people might like to use this but I think that it sort of does a little bit too much uh, contrast. Then we have soft light which is basically a softer version of the overlay mode. So it has less saturation than the overlay mode. So here is the original. Here is soft light. So a lot of times people use soft light to bring out details in their photos. You can see how much detail comparison. The shadows are more prominent, the lights are more prominent. Okay, moving on to hard light. Hard light let me move on here. Oop, not vivid light. Hard light. Hard light is a combination of linear dodge and linear burn. So here is the original. Here is the hard light version. And then you've got vivid light, which is a combination of color dodge and color burn. So you can see how much it's saturated. Um, all of the colors and then it darkens the dark and lightens the light. So it's a really sort of extreme look. I mean look what it does to these shadows. And then you've got uh, linear light which is like a more extreme version of vivid light. It brings more whiteness out. And then pin light is going to do nothing because it is a combination of lighten and darken. Oop. Pin light. Um, the pixels cancel each other out on pin light. Then you have hard mix. Hard mix is um, linear light with a threshold, basically. So uh, some of the colors turn all black, and some of the colors turn all white, and then the rest of them have crazy saturation levels. So this is not something most people would use on their photos, unless they didn't want them to look natural. Okay, moving on to inversion and cancellation. Difference is going to turn our screen black because the pixels cancel each other out in this blending mode. So difference is only something you're going to use with overlays. And then we've got exclusion, which basically inverts your photo, or in some cases may even turn it gray, but either way, probably not something you're going to use. Then you've got subtract and divide. Subtract uh, cancels itself out because <laughs> similar cancel similar colors cancel and then divide will do extreme highlights so this is not going to be something that you guys use the colors down here the component colors really only are affected when you have colors on the top layer the blending mode layer that you do not have on the bottom layer 
we use hue to create uh, to get rid of green screen halos in here I have another tutorial based on that so here I'm going to just draw so you can see let me just take a big brush uh, big brush I'm gonna draw across here so you can see okay so hue uh, takes colors from the top layer the blending mode layer and applies them to the image from the active layer so you can see where I colored the blue it absorbs it into the layer below this is the reason that it works for halos on the hair when you have a green screen halo okay so the same let me show you what it looks like in normal so in normal I have these two big blue lines hue it's absorbed these colors then on saturation it does some weird um, saturation luminosity and hue stuff so it sort of gives you contrasting hues probably not something that you'll use unless you're looking for something really artsy then you've got color which basically overlays that color in sort of a glow and then you've got luminosity which doesn't really work so much on um, the duplicate layers because you create this sort of it's almost like a burn effect like an extreme burn effect so it darkens everything and pulls out colors so it's sort of a weird effect that's not really something you're going to be using okay so we have seen what all of these things do now I want to show you what happens when you add a blur effect and then use a blending mode so we're going to go to filter blur and Gaussian blur the more blur you have the more extreme the softening effect is and I'm going to show you with a decent amount of blur which would be about seven pixels radius I usually don't really want a lot of blur so I usually keep it around four but if you want a more soft extreme look you're gonna go with something around seven I'll click OK so you can see this has created this blurred effect blurry now we're going to change the blending mode like I said originally the three main ones that we're going to use are multiply screen and soft light so let's see what it looks like with multiply okay so here's the original here's the blurred version with multiply on so it creates this soft effect and then it pulls out the dark colors so the same effect that happened on the non blurry photo happens now with a blur effect that doesn't carry over completely so even though on normal this looks extremely blurry once you screen once you blend over the next active layer you create a softer look so here you can see all this cool blur effect now if we wanted to do the same thing but we wanted it to be all light and ethereal and glowy we'll change it to screen so now you've got the screen effect with all this glowy magic then moving on to soft light you're pulling out the colors and then the effect of the softness is a little bit less extreme so all of the darker colors are more obvious all of the lighter colors are more obvious let's see the before and the after the most prominent effect I think is screen this is the most commonly used effect in photos in Second Life where a lot of people want to have that ethereal sort of glowy look so it takes away some of the blur but it creates the lightness effect let me show you what it looks like in let's duplicate this layer I'm going to show you what it looks like normal Let's go to screen okay so this is without the blur and this is with the blur without the blur with the blur and you can layer your effects so if you wanted the screen mode but you wanted it extreme you can duplicate the layer and create a more extreme screening mode or if you wanted a really light photo but you also wanted to have some contrast you can combine soft light and screen modes 
So you can play around with the combinations, but all in all, you can use the blending mode to create different looks on your active layer by just layering them on top of one another. And like I said before, you can do it on the green screen photos as well, and you can do it on individual layers, because the blending mode only affects the layer that's below it, which is the active layer. All, all the layers below it, which are all the active layers. So if I have two layers down here, the top blending mode layer applies over all of those active layers, but not the ones above it. So that is that. I'm, I know that this is maybe a little bit more in-depth of a tutorial, so if you have questions, you can leave them below, or you can uh, send them to me on Plurk, on Second Life, or on Flickr. The links are in my uh, channel page. Thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you next time.